Hey everyone, in this video lecture, we are going to introduce the topic of cell. To begin this topic, we need to remind ourselves what we talked about at the very beginning of the year, is what makes something alive? What does it mean to be a living organism? And we went through this long acronym of CHUDGER, identifying all the different qualifications that something would need to have in order to be alive. The very first qualification is that every living thing is made up of cells. Cells are the smallest unit of life because one single cell represents a living organism. Every living thing is either one cell or it's made up of many cells. So there are many different types of living organisms that are unicellular. They're made up of one single cell like bacteria, amoebas, Whereas there are many organisms that are multicellular, made up of many, many cells. So in the example here, we have a blue jay and a crocodile. Humans, for example, multicellular. We have trillions and trillions of cells inside of our body that make us who we are. But cells alone are the smallest unit of life. So we're going to talk about these cells and how to characterize and group cells and what actually is inside or makes up of cells in this lesson today. So some basic structure that every single cell, no matter what living organism we're talking about, has the same basic structure to their cells. First is that there's some form of a cell membrane. <clears throat> the cell membrane is what's going to separate the outside of the cell from the inside. So every type of cell, no matter what type of cell we talk about, will have a membrane separating the inside from the outside. On that inside, you will find cytoplasm. And a little bit of vocab for you, the root here, cyto, means cell in Latin. So cytoplasm is this sort of fluid-like substance inside of the cell. <clears throat> then inside of the cells, you're going to find organelles which are structures that have a very specific job to the function of the cell. Now, the types of organelles we find in every cell might be different depending on what cell we're looking at. But no matter what, cells, even the simplest ones, will have some kind of organelle inside of it. And then lastly, cells need genetic material because one single cell could be a living organism and part of being alive is having genetic material either DNA and or RNA. <clears throat> now to categorize cells, we can, every living cell can be split into one of two categories. The first is prokaryotic, also known as prokaryotes. So a prokaryotic cell is a type of cell that has no nucleus in it. A nucleus is one of the organelles that we're going to talk about. And if you remember from middle school science, you know, it's where genetic materials typically found. So prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus. They don't have many organelles. They have very few organelle structures inside of the cell. And they're very simple and small in size. They're, they don't have a lot going on inside of them. An example of a prokaryotic type of cell would be bacterial cells. There are many other types of organisms that fall into prokaryote. Uh, but bacteria is the common one that you'd see in this class in particular. So if a cell is not prokaryotic, we say it's eukaryotic, or the organism is a eukaryote. That means they have a nucleus inside of their cells, and they also will have many more organelles. And because there's a nucleus, because they're organelles, they typically are much larger in size compared to prokaryotic cells. And our eukaryotic cells are broken up into two categories themselves. Either they are plant cells, so they're, they're cells that make up plant organisms, or animal cells that are found inside of animals. <clears throat> And then we can even go further and break them up. Eve, the plant and animal, for example, in animals, there are many different types of cells, skin cells, stomach cells, uh, hair cells, the list goes on and on. Um, but these are the main groupings of cells that you need to be familiar with in our class. I do just want to remind you that viruses 
are not alive, if you think back when we talked about our characteristics of living things, they do not have cells. They have some of the characteristics of life, but one of the crucial ones that they do not have are cells. One single virus is not a cell. It is not made up of cells. Viruses are not living things. So you need to keep that clear that viruses are not cells.